Hello, my name is George Hune. In this video, we're going to look at the results of the prioritization that we did in a previous video to see how OPSI displays and analyzes the Monte Carlo simulation data. So, the first thing we do is to go to the Decision Manager form and click on the Prioritizer tab. This opens to the page where our prioritization data is stored. We can expand the prioritization name to see the prioritized portfolio name below it. Let's select that and then click on Open to open the Prioritizer list form. The Prioritizer list form lists the project rank and the statistical results of the prioritization. The first column displays the absolute rank of the projects based on the average rank achieved, as displayed in the third column. The standard deviation for the average value score is listed in the fourth column. The fifth and sixth columns display the highest rank and the lowest rank that the project achieved in all the different simulations. The seventh column displays the cumulative percentage rank. This is an indication of the strength of the project. That is, projects with higher cumulative percentage ranks were ranked higher more often than they were ranked lower. I'll talk more about this later. The eighth column displays the mean value score achieved for each project, and the ninth column displays the standard deviation of that mean value score. You can sort the columns by clicking on the column name at the top. Notice that when we click the average value score, that the absolute ranking can change and is different than the ranking obtained using the average rank score. This is because the average rank is a score based on the relative relationship between the projects, whereas the average value is independently calculated for each project. This data can be easily viewed and analyzed in charts so we'll start by opening up the statistic chart by clicking on the stat chart button at the top of the form. Each project is represented by a bubble and a plus or minus set of error bars. Double clicking on a project in the chart area opens the form that displays the probability distribution of the value score for that particular project as a histogram. So let's take a look at this. At the bottom of the chart on the left side is the information about the prioritization the name, the type, the distribution. On the right side are some of the statistical results. When you first open the form, it displays the cumulative percentage line drawn over the histogram. Moving from left to right, the line represents the increasing probability that the actual value score for the project is at or below the number on the x-axis. So, in this example, there is a 10% probability that the actual value score for this project is less than 50.8 there is a 50% probability that the actual value score for this project is less than 56.8 and there's a 90% probability that the actual value score for this project is less than 62.4. This view is particularly useful because it shows you that there is an 80% probability that the actual value score for this project is between 50.8 and 62.4 and the most likely value is at 56.8. As an aside, if you're scoring your projects now using only single values, your results could be any place in this distribution and you'd have no idea what the actual probability was of achieving that value score. Now, you can also look at the mean and standard deviation values by clicking on the button at the bottom of the form. This then displays views with two, four, and six sigmas. Standard deviations are not as useful as cumulative probability distributions because many times the histograms are skewed and we can view different histograms by clicking the next and previous buttons. Now that you've seen the histogram, the project representations on this form will make more sense. So if we click the toggle button in the lower left of the form, you can see the different views that are possible. The default view is the mean project rank and an error bar representing two sigmas. By selecting the other buttons, you can also see the mean value score and its standard deviations and the median 90% and 10% value that we saw in the histogram. By clicking on the maximum minimum checkbox, you can toggle the display of the maximum and minimum values achieved, either for rank or value score, depending on what display is selected. As you can see, the maximum and minimum value scores often have long lines which often represent long tails in the distribution charts. However, just because a project had distant outliers does not necessarily mean that it has a real wide distribution. 
It could be that only one or two simulations were responsible for the outliers, and that is where the cumulative percentage charts help make sense of this. So we'll close this chart and open the cumulative percentage chart. The cumulative percentage chart is a bar chart that shows the relative strength of a project based on the strength of its ranking score. The bars are actually based on a more complicated line chart, which I'll show you so that you can see where this data comes from. Take for example Project Delphinius. Its line shows that it was ranked number one in 37% of the simulations, ranked number two or higher in 93% of the simulations, ranked number three or higher in roughly 98 percent of the simulations, and ranked number six or higher in 100 percent of the simulations. Therefore, its cumulative percentage ranking is strongly biased towards the higher rankings, and therefore it has a higher area under the curve, whereas other projects can have the opposite, where the cumulative percentage ranking is biased towards lower ranking and would have a lower area under the curve. So now we'll just close the cumulative percentage distribution chart and open the distribution chart form to show you that this offers a quick way to scan through the distribution histograms for each project. Double clicking on a project opens the project. Finally, each time you run a prioritization, a new portfolio is created that contains the results of the prioritization, including the value scores and distributions. You can see that by clicking on the Decision Models and Portfolios tab, and there we can see the My First Prioritization Decision Model. Expanding that and double clicking on the My First Portfolio portfolio opens it. We can then use this for our optimizations, which we'll be discussing in our next video. As you can see, Opsi makes running your portfolios in Monte Carlo simulations really easy and gives you all the data and charts necessary to make informed decisions about the actual values and value distribution of your projects. If you're using just a single point value score for your projects, then you can see that you really don't know and can't know what the actual distribution of those scores are. So now you can find out by trying Opsi for yourself in your own portfolio by signing up for our free trial today. Thanks for watching. Wait, no, no, that's the mic's. Did you have a fun time?